Hello ladies and gentlemen this is Nishant and welcome to another episode of the Nishant Girl show This show is for people who want to live a fulfilled life through mindfulness practices and personal transformation My job on this show is to invite world class performers to share the practices to live a fulfilled life This episode guest is Debra Myers and in this episode she is going to share proven tips on letting go of the layers of tension by unwrapping your stress Debra guides those who suffer from anxiety, panic and pain. Debra Myers educates where physical tension is located and how mental tension is created. Her certification is in stress management, integral yoga, as well as her personal journey with stress-related issues contributes to the success she has with clients at the psychological level. Her program Unwrapping Stress instructs participants to release their layers of tension and stress through the methods of stress management techniques in the direction of restoring both body and mind towards recovery and relaxation additionally her sleep management program educates participants on how to deeply release their mental physical tension towards relaxation and restoration and now let the episode begin debra welcome to the show thank you my pleasure so i would like to start off with my favorite question how would your family describe what you do for a living well i my right now um it's just my mother that is uh living and um from my family that's left and i would say that she says that um i help to show people how to relax and to become calm even if you're feeling really really um overwhelmed and or you're in pain because those are some of the things that um i direct her and and help her as well okay a uh, relax calm and not feeling overwhelmed yes and you are author of stress management unwrapping stress and sleeping management techniques yes i would like to ask you what was your motivation to launch these programs well it, it all started for me it was my own health journey um i didn't um start off with this uh knowing how to be calm or relaxed i was actually the antithesis of all of that <laughs> and um i had a lot of health issues um whenever i was younger and i always um was told that um you know you've got to be careful so that you don't catch this or that because it seemed like my immune system was very susceptible so um and i was tutored whenever i was younger and that so it was always kind of like a fear about my health that was there in the background and another thing that i noticed and i didn't know this at the time but i could really pick up uh a lot on people's moods um or you could think of it energy and it seemed like it really affected the way how i was feeling and it and exacerbated um my conditions you know i didn't really realize that as i was going through it but now whenever i look back um i can see how that all like connected and um so that's what i would say is that's how i kind of started but my health wasn't good and then i and then eventually through my whenever i was a young adult um i didn't know really what i wanted to do um i did enjoy um dance i did enjoy um uh, musical theater a lot but um my father he was uh he was he came from a very strict background and that so you know um you know he meant well and everything but he thought well how much are you going to make from that type of occupation and then and so he really discouraged that from me and um so i felt a bit thwarted and i didn't i i just didn't feel encouraged and i didn't know like really what to do 
And my father, he was um, a pilot. He had his own plane and everything. He wasn't an airline pilot or anything, but he had his own plane. And, um, you know, growing up and everything, um, you know, he always wanted me to fly and that, but I did not feel confident in doing that. But I thought, well, maybe since I didn't know what to do, and I had a, a little bit of contentious relationship with my father, <laughs> trying to, uh, I was a people pleaser. Um, and uh, I wanted to try to please him. So I thought, oh, okay, I'll, I'll be in the airlines. Why not try that? And so um, as I did that, uh, it really didn't call me, you know, that it was just something that I thought, well, this is something to do. Maybe I could do my musical theater and dance on the side, which I did. I, I taught um, children dance and um, I performed a little bit um, back then as an adult. But, um, you know, uh, as I was doing this career in the airline industry, you know, way back when, whenever I started, they still had smoking on flights <laughs> how long ago was it <laughs> smoking on the flight on on flights there was that magical um and how long smoke. ago was that oh and it was in the 1980s it was um i started in 1987 i was a i was the flight attendant and um and there was smoking on the flight and you know so this section was smoking and then the magical section and rows in front of it were not smoking so um you just sat there in the plane and you could really smell a lot of the smoke and you know the the air just keep on getting recirculated and recirculated and so um i really um you know i i I flew a lot, like on my father's, like my father's little plane and that, but I didn't do a lot of commercial flying. So when I um, became a, you know, flight attendant, you had to go through a quite a rigorous screening. They had a, quite a rigorous screening back then. And, um, but I was determined to, um, to go ahead and do this. And, um, but unfortunately, um, one of my first flights um, as flight attendant, um, I'm sitting there, it's a very small aircraft, and they do what they call puddle jumpers, meaning very short trips. And so you're flying kind of like in alignment with the clouds, and you're kind of bouncing around and everything. <laughs> so this little puddle jumper, I'm kind of bouncing around and everything, and, and I'm smelling this, like, you know, smoke from, you know, and I'm just really feeling nauseated and that and so um like the like the um overheads the bins of the overheads were opening and i felt like really nauseous so i you know it was a very trying time uh needless to say and to make a long story short um i did uh, several trips with this first crew and the captain says you know what you look like really ill <laughs> i think you should get off the trip and, and so that uh, i would like to ask you over here that uh, did you get into that airline industry just because you wanted to please your father? Yes. <laughs> yes, that's what happened. At the time, at the time, um, how can I say it? Uh, Nishant, at the time, I didn't know that. I just thought, well, you know, he keeps on talking about that and I don't know what else to do. But um, I really felt that I did. And, um, you know, and I thought, you know, at least, and I always was feeling like maybe in some way, you know, he could like kind of cut me some slack and be proud of me. And, he, and, and like I said, he tried very hard in his life. He had a really hard upbringing and everything. But for me, it was a little bit challenging um, on my end. Um, sometimes, and I wanted to, I, I, he was very, you know, uh, didn't have a happy childhood and so kind of strict. And so I, I really wanted to kind of make things a bit easier for him. And so this was, that was actually internally, I got to learn that's what I was doing and how much that I was not being authentic to myself. And um, that really um, created a lot of havoc um, internally in my um, nervous system and in my um, immunity. Yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for your answer. 
and i'm sure a lot of listeners and a lot of people in this culture and society are just trying to please their parents and families even if they don't feel like to do anything you know and they have their passion their purpose and something else and just because they want to please our families yes yes and i and i think that what you know what i found was um this all like now i see how it all fit in you know so well and how it made me wake up um my um my health uh, really took a nose dive and um and i didn't do it any favors with um the the diet that i had and i would do a lot of um flights or trips as they they call them um that i would be um awake during the the night time and asleep during the day um i took those types of trips so that i could have the longest amount of sleep because um it was you know i would if i would just fly the regular flights like where you're awake during the day and sleep during the night um where i was um in um uh in uh how can i put it um seniority you know seniority with the airline i was very junior so um the trips that i got you would have like a lot of flying time and not a lot of sleep time so um that's why i started to do they were called red eye trips you know and i did those for years and i would take like you know all kinds of like that you know then espresso was coming out and you know and all those things and um so i would be you know really trying to power myself with all of those things to try to stay awake at night and then it made it very challenging for me to sleep during the day and not really getting a lot of sleep and so and then i would do some of these back to back and this all c- compounded um what happened to my um immune system and it, until finally um you know i was experiencing you know at the time they didn't know it was new um chronic fatigue they weren't sure if it was um the uh gulf war you know um uh disease you know there was there was a lot of things i was showing a lot of those symptoms but i would have a lot of fatigue and i would like try to go to sleep like for a nap you know um whenever on my time off and i would wake up 6 hours later and um and my diet was really really horrendous um all i just did was crave sweets and bread and and so i just kind of went with that because i thought well i deserve it because <laughs> you know of this horrendous thing and i really at the time i was very you know underweight in everything and um one day my immune system did um crash and it was um it took some time though uh for it to do that but as i look back um you know when you're going through it you don't really realize but as i look back it was it was a it was a life changer it was a game changer for me and the disaster doesn't come overnight so that's right and your immune system speaking of your immune system issues do you think that problem happened because you were not enjoying working in the airline industry absolutely you know um <laughs> i i remember um you know just you know i i liked i liked helping people i liked that part of it and i loved the crew the crew the fantastic people you know and that but it was you know just um you know getting to and from um different places and then and just bouncing around you know like you know doing all of the serving and bouncing around and walking around and then you know we would um you land and take off land and take off and the the decompression you know um how that affects your your nervous system and your organs and you know that was part of it and um i know i you know told you that i also had some issues with um uh some things that you know happened with the airline too 
um, you know, we had uh, an error, we had a, an accident and um, it was, I wasn't on the flight. It was um, a flight that was supposed to um, uh, come in, you know, at the same gate area as we were. And it was a beautiful day. Um, not a not a, a cloud in the sky, just like a 9-11. This was way before 9-11. This was probably about a decade or so before 9-11 that this happened. And um, this plane, it was the same type of aircraft that I was on. It, you know, it, it crashed. You know, there were no survivors at all. And, you know, the gate agent that met our flight, you know, was just, you know, telling us this. And it really you know, it took us a while. We were very, very, you know, shocked. Our crew was really, really shocked to hear that, you know, and you're just kind of taken aback, like what happened. And so I didn't realize at the time that I was being affected by this. I just knew that I would, I, I needed to still continue to fly on this particular plane, because if I said to myself, no, don't fly on this plane, you don't know what's going on with it, you know, I know that I would start avoiding a lot of other um, things, you know, because I, I had some um, other family members that had issues with heights and avoided like, you know, elevators and escalators and all of those types of things. And, and so I thought, oh, geez, I don't want that to happen to me. So I made myself um, get on the, get on that type of aircraft. But all the while, um, I didn't know, we didn't know, we didn't know for about a year or so, that's how long it takes to kind of figure out um, through the, you know, investigation of really what, what happened. And so you're always kind of wondering. And so not only to answer your question, um, you know, not only was it that I didn't, um, that, that the airline industry wasn't really in my heart of that's what like I wanted to do in my life. It was also, um, the way how the, um, just the environment was and then there was this you know this, this accident that kind of like started the ball rolling and it made me go into um you know fight or flight response and I didn't know I didn't know what any of this was I just knew that my mind would um just keep on uh thinking of worst case scenarios let's just put it I'll put it mildly you know about like what would happen to the plane. And, and, and I found out like, you know, as I became a stress management instructor that our, you know, our mind is, it doesn't like certainty. And so, you know, and we're more gravitated towards negativity. And so um, what I, I didn't know this, but my mind, you know, as protection as a form of protection kept going to worst case scenarios about the plane, you know, having, you know, different things happening to it. And, you know, I, it would just keep doing that. And any time that the, it would like bounce around or anything, um, I would, you know, think, oh my goodness, you know, the plane is, you know, really, um, you know, this, this, this could be it. And so what happens is, is even though your mind um, it's thinking those things, your body is reacting to them. And, you know, you can, on the outside, not appear to be phased. You can see, I have some folks, uh, you know, that I, um, in, you know, help and assist um, with stress management. And it may be they have um, undergone, you know, trauma in their life and you can't see it on the outside. They have a very cool demeanor on the outside, but on the inside, you know, they're really going through a lot, you know? Um, and for, for me though, um, I did kind of wear <laughs> my you know, emotions, you know, on the outside, people could probably tell I sat in the back, not in the view of the public, but, um, you know, I knew that I was really, um, you know, feeling, you know, traumatized by it. And, and, and at the time, whenever this was happening, there wasn't, there wasn't a lot of, um, they did have that you could go 
to see somebody like a psychologist, you know, um, and for uh, PTSD. And, you know, I do recommend people to do that. But at the time, it was just kind of new. And, and in my family, oh, what uh, is PTSD? Um, post, yeah, post traumatic stress disorder. Yes, you know, and that's where you're you're um, being triggered. Something in your environment that's happening to you now is triggering a, a traumatic that trauma that happened in the past that really caused that. So you know, basically, stress is here as a protection mechanism for us. You know, it's here to protect us um, when we perceive a threat. So let's just say, for instance, you know, if you're, um, you know, uh, if you're at one time I was in a car accident and that. And so what you do is, you know, your body tries to help you through this. So it so my muscles contracted to brace myself. And, you know, your, your breathing becomes very, you know, shallow and that because you're getting all your energy, the sugars are happening into your extremities. It's helping you to either fight the situation, run away from the situation, or in my case, you know, it's like I just kind of held on to the steering wheel whenever I was in a car accident. Um, and and, you know, whenever that happens, you know, I was holding on to the steering wheel and I was just kind of going with it or you can freeze. So there's a fight, flight and freeze. This is here to stress is here and designed here to help you when you're in the midst of a trauma. But post-traumatic is after the trauma and things that have triggered it and you don't feel safe and your mind is kind of like anticipating you know it was surprised and now it's anticipating so it won't be surprised and so what i do when i help with others um is to be able to release some of that um triggered response the the energy of that um triggered response i help them to to release that and i think this ptsd called post trauma situation is very common and this is applicable in any area of our life if we are pursuing any goal that we really love and if some failure happens if we are coming across so many obstacles and we, we keep thinking about the worst case scenario what if this happens what if that happens then it creates a lot of anxiety stress and worries and we kind of get into our head and not able to think clearly if that makes sense to you yes it does and what i find you know because i will um i will deal with this situation with some of my clients and you know maybe it might be so you gave the example if there's you know something happening in our in our business you know that is bringing up this trauma and it's and what i find is that the trauma that's happening in in the present moment, there's actually more of a trigger in the past. And you don't have to um, understand that or know about that at that time. You're there to just address the trauma at, in the present moment. So let's just say, for instance, you know, um, you know, if you're feeling afraid to um, uh, sell something to somebody, you know, and that, and so maybe that's something that is, you know, happening now, you're feeling a bit, you know, intimidated, but, and, and so I would like, you know, work with folks, you know, to be able to um, help them to relax in the body, watch their breathing, being mindful, you know, using mindfulness practices in order to help them with that. Um, but, uh, you know, the, that instance of trauma could have even happened to them maybe as a child, whenever they were, um, you know, and usually this doesn't, I'm not searching for that answer whenever I'm working with folks. What happens is, is I do some relaxation, mindfulness, uh, relaxation, breathing exercises, and then all of a sudden <laughs> the client says, you know what, this reminds me back whenever you know, I was a child and I was, I was knocking on the door to try to sell 
this for my, you know, school. And this person that was like a bully came up and, you know, and they really intimidated me. And, and I didn't even think about that. And so then, so then what I do is then I, I help them to be able to bring that uh, scenario to their mind. And, you know, we work with in the body and the, and the breathing and, and how to, to let go of that. And, um, and, you know, sometimes it's something that did happen to them in the past, or I've had some clients where they can't really, you know, they, I mean, they're like, you know, nothing, there's nothing in the past that comes up, but there it's very, um, prominent in their life. It's something that really is a decision maker for them and they can't, they can't link it to anything at all, even, you know, and so sometimes we find, Nishan, that that can be even in the family, like it could have been generational. So let's say, for instance, you know, either mom or dad or grandma or grandpa had um, some issues, you know, and, and that gets transferred to us because, you know, we can, whenever we're born, not only do we have you know, we might have um, grandma and grandpa's like, you know, smile or eyes, but we can also, you know, pick up generationally the nervous system and sometimes the trauma that has happened generationally as well. And so, you know, we'll work, I work with them on imagery and breathing exercises um, as well to help release that. And over here, I would like to ask you that... Uh, our current fears, any fear that we have in the present moment, do you feel that all those fears are coming from our past? Or there is some linkage to any past event? Well, you know, that's the thing. Well, this is uh, another thing. It it can't, you know, I like um, Eckhart Tolle because he talks a lot about the present moment and, you know, am I, you know, am I in danger? What's, is there, you know, something is, you know, am I safe in the present moment? You know, what's wrong in this moment? And if there's nothing wrong in this moment, but I'm feeling that fear. Okay. So what I would say to you is, it's not necessarily something that is actually happening in the present moment but we're sensing that fear and that fear can uh be triggered by a lot of things and 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 so at the time when you're experiencing fear what i would say as a mindfulness practice what would be the most helpful thing to do is just to be mindful in the present moment that i'm experiencing fear don't try to figure it out at the time because we're, our mind is a little bit too activated in order to give us good information. Just become more mindful of like what else is happening in the body. I like to help people take these feelings and instead of making them so esoteric and, and everything up in the mind, I like to have them bring it more down into the body. And maybe I'm not even sensing my body, you know, so. So is so, there any practice for that? Is there any sitting posture, standing posture? So how does that mindfulness practice look like in the real world? <laughs> okay, good. Yes. Well, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you an example. Um, I, As I was saying before, um, uh, I at, at some time ago, um, I was, you know, during the time whenever I was flying, I was also in a car accident. And so this um, particular mindfulness practice that I did, like, you know, really helped me, you know, um, the, the reason why I started doing this mindfulness practice in the car was I was having post-traumatic stress. And, you know, yes, I had a car accident, but then it was also my post-traumatic stress was also linked to the um, airplane accident that that happened, you know, uh, previously. And so I was not grounded. I, whenever I would get in the car, I felt that um, life was unsafe. And so I did not have a, a sense of myself or a sense of safety. So what I did, and, and the reason why I'm giving you this mindfulness example is that you can do these practices anywhere. So I, you know, I would get into the car 
And I would, you know, sit there and, you know, I would drive and that, and then whenever I would go to a stoplight or stop sign, you know, I would notice that I really wasn't, um, you know, uh, my shoulders were up, my shoulders were up. And so I was just like, I would just like let my shoulders relax down. So even as I'm talking right now, uh, your listeners can just see, can I just allow my shoulders just to come down a little bit away from my ears. And uh, and so doing that. And so as I do that, and I can just also check too and see, you know, as as I was sitting there in the car, can I sense my hands on the wheel? And believe it or not, <laughs> I know this sounds incredible, but <laughs> it's like, if I didn't look at my hands because I was so much in my head, I couldn't really sense my hands, even though I knew I was driving the car. And I had to kind of look at my hands out of the side of my eyes. So I would just do that. I would do that at the different traffic lights or different stoplights. I would just like, see if I can just let my shoulders relax down. See and this is I a have. great practice where you can divert your mind because we human beings constantly think keep thinking about something in the past or the future. And I, this is a great practice to bring our awareness in the present moment. If you are driving, for instance, you know, yes. focusing on your hands, focusing on your shoulder or focusing on your breath. And that's yes. when you're bringing Focus, your yeah. mindfulness. Yes. And then what I would do is, let's just say I, you know, had a very... Uh, uh, trying time driving and it's raining or whatever and it's and there's lots of traffic or lots of fog and that and so I'm not feeling very comfortable and so what I would do is um, this is a tense and release exercise so I invite your listeners and yourself to try this as well so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and bring our shoulders up to our ears and hold them up hold them up hold them up and now let them release down. Let them release down and just breathe normally. And now we're gonna try that again. This time we're gonna use the breath. We're gonna inhale and hold the shoulders up, hold the breath, hold the shoulders up, hold the breath, hold the shoulders up, and then exhale, let it release. This is, this is an amazing exercise. I knew some parts of it. I'm going to apply. Honestly, I have had a stressful week. I'm going to <laughs> let go some of my stress from this exercise. Yes. I want to ask you, stress and tension, is there any difference between these two guys? Well, tension is a reflection. It's it's the information that you're under stress. Like, you know, I didn't realize, I didn't realize how much stress I was under. You know, um, whenever I was, whenever I was um, a flight attendant, I, you know, I was um, telling you that part time, I, you know, I also danced, you know, I would, I would go and I would, you know, dance and I danced for years just you know just semi-professionally and that and um uh there was a mentor of mine she was a prima ballerina and she says you know what you know and I knew I was flexible but she says you hold a lot of tension in your body and so I'm like really do I I'm like I didn't know that you know because I thought my goodness if you could stretch and do this I I, I felt like I was flexible but he didn't really realize that I was tense. And so um, it was through, it wasn't all of the major muscle group exercises that you do that, you know, they help, you know, and yoga is wonderful because I love yoga because it can show you, you can do bigger movements, but I like the ones, and I learned through integral yoga, how to do more subtle movements or just even after you're done in integral yoga, uh, you, you just, after you're done doing, uh, an asana or two, then you kind of lie down and you're accessing yourself and you're seeing where am I still holding tension in my body? So, um, you know, the tension is a byproduct of stress. Tension is a byproduct. It's giving you information that you're under stress because you'll see people. I know I would go to health fairs 
<laughs> and I, you know, and they say, oh, what do you do? And I say, I, I teach stress management. And they're like, oh, I'm not tense. You know, and they're clenching their jaw. <laughs> so as part of a stress management... I'm sorry. As part of a stress management, it signifies to to manage our stress. But to manage our stress, we get to identify yes. whether that stress exists and if it does exist, where it exists. Absolutely, and and how it's affecting us. And you know what I like about you know doing the tense and release exercises is you know in yoga they talk about you know. You just you use the you use the um, movement to help um, influence the mind. So if I can relax my muscles, I that's the way in. That's another door into how to change my thinking. And there is an affirmation about this. I read in a book. I think the book is the power of positive thinking. And there is an affirmation when we can say to ourselves, my muscles are relaxed, my muscles are relaxed, because we hold those tensions, those negative energies in our muscles. So if we can relax our muscles, we can release and let go of those stress. And and I find too, and I'm just going to share this with you. Sometimes Please. I find that, um, you know, I the clients that I have, um, you know, at the psychological practice, you know, I'm helping people that have had, you know, severe trauma in their life. And, and sometimes, you know, um, you know, they've, they've really taught me to go even deeper in my own awareness. And, and so whenever I first started off, I, I did that too, you know, just relax your muscles. And, and it's like, yeah, I can do that, you know, but whenever I would work with those folks that have had trauma, where they're, they just don't even realize they're so removed. They had to, in order to survive trauma, they had to actually kind of be out of their body, like remove themselves from their body. And, and so what I've, you know, had them do is maybe just focus on breathing or, um, with some folks and, and, and it's, it took a while talking about, they weren't able to just relax the muscles I would have them go to different parts I would have them do some imagery exercises and follow along maybe like in a nature scene and something that's neutral is and it kind of is it kind of an imagination or visualization visualization absolutely that's what it is visualization and as you have someone focus on something that's neutral that was not um, trauma inducing for them, you know, so you've got to find out what their triggers are. If it's like, if it's okay to, to, you know, walk along the beach and that's fine, you know, you find out for them, that's, that's good. And, you know, Oh, this reminds me. And this is like a nice thing. And, and I just like, I think of the water. So you have to pick something. If we can pick something neutral and, you know, just even think of, you know, if this feels like a good image for you like ocean waves you know as the ocean waves you know come in you know I take my in breath as the ocean waves come away from the shore I'm pulling all the tension I'm exhaling out and just pulling all that tension away from me and I take in a breath and again I can hold it here just like the waves come up to the shore and as I exhale out I pull out and I release and I release that tension away from me. And I have them really go into the exercise and, and to be as descriptive as you possibly can, you know, talk about like, you know, can you hear seagulls and can you feel the sand beneath your feet and can you hear the waves and can you feel the sun? And, and just as you allow yourself to go into this visualization, this neutral visualization, you become more and more immersed in it. And that signals to our nervous system that we're relaxed and that we're safe. Have you and had experience, any experience with your client when they mentioned that they are feeling relaxed in that moment or in that session? 
but when they go back home they go they get back to their normal stressful state um yes yes and no this is what i find is that and this is something that's going to be um something that is you know to to really feel hopeful about they are they do go back but and and i know this from from working with clients over the years they do go back and they say you know what i'm still feeling it but but what we see is that it they're not the same meaning they have released by going through the visualization by doing these exercises you slowly and that's why i call my program unwrapping stress because we just can't like rip it off like a bandaid you know it, it's it's layers there's so many layers of a stress and tension in our body absolutely there's so many layers to it and and so you know you know as you know as you take up one layer and the other it's like it's a part of our protection mechanism you know the body and even like you know people talk about the ego and everything i mean it's part of our humanity you know that protects us to to you know feel the fear and you know go into the anger it's part of our humanity it's part of our protection mechanism and then and so in order to to um like not feel as afraid we can't just rip the bandaid off we have to channelizing yeah. fear and anger in a positive energy it's information it's information i love tik nan han who he, he would have a meditation saying hello my fear hello my anger you know this is i feel and, and tik nan han is a buddhist monk people who it, are not aware of tik nan han he is from tibet and he's an amazing buddhist monk yes 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 and and so what i find and especially for um clients that have had very difficult upbringings where their their feelings have not been acknowledged meaning you know maybe um the parent was overwhelmed and in some way or or maybe the parent wasn't there and so the whenever they experience whenever the child experience something it's like you know just get over it or i don't have time for this or or they weren't able to anybody to acknowledge and uh, men and boys are being told not to cry if a man cries mm-hmm. society says you you cannot cry you're a man you got to be strong this is for ladies you know mm-hmm. we are we are told to do something different which we are not and there is a, there is this beautiful saying i remember from lao tzu when i let go of who i am i become what i am supposed to be oh wow that gives me chills that's awesome yes and yes. there are many many mindfulness practices one of them is yoga then we have breathing and doing shoulder shrug exercises you know and mindful and today before this recording i was kind of feeling anxious about certain things and i just went for a long walk i was literally counting the number of trees and plants while i was walking in my neighborhood so that i can focus on the present moment and divert my thoughts onto different things counting number of trees and plants around while i'm walking Yes. You know, and and so sometimes what we can ask ourselves is like whenever you're focused on let's say if you're focused on the trees or the plants, you know, maybe there might be a feeling that comes up. Maybe it might be a feeling of anxiousness. And so being mindful, so another mindfulness practice is just being aware of my emotions. and instead of judging them because mindfulness is non-judgmental awareness instead of judging it looking at it as information and i like to i have um several um uh you know male clients and that and um you know 
I have them go through the practice of, you know, just saying, you know, just being a friend to yourself, just being a buddy to yourself. And, you know, just like you would, you know, I know that we're being a buddy to like the, the younger part of ourself, you know, and, and, and we can also be a buddy of, you know, to ourself as, as the adult and just saying, you know what, what's going on? What's happening? You know, we want that in a partner to ask us, you know, to, to validate our feelings, but we really need to start that practice with our, with ourselves and not rely on the other person to try to, you know, guess or um, they should know <laughs> that whenever I have this look or, or they should know not to bother me because I, when I'm really silent, that means I'm upset, you know. And so, you know, what we do is this, we start doing this mindfulness practice is, you know, you're, you're looking at the trees and you're counting the trees and it's helping you to start slowly unwinding. And then a feeling comes up. And then a feeling comes up and, and maybe you could just say, I, I feel something and I'm not really sure what it is. And so maybe I can just see if I can just breathe here, just maybe exhale out. I always have my clients, you know, just focus on the exhalation. That's just a little letting go and, and just seeing if I can just breathe here. And maybe I could start feeling maybe where that tension is in my body. So I'm just saying it was that. Is that anger? Is it fear? I'm saying, you know, it might be a little bit of anger, you know. I'm saying, okay, well, you know, what what is it you're angry about? Well, I'm just anger, angry that, you know, this didn't come through and I was really counting on it. And, you know, I'm just really upset, you know. And so it's just just breathing there and, you know, just allowing yourself almost to have like a inner conversation but in a in a gentle way this is a way of um uh Krista Neff talks about the self-compassion and so this is about being you know compassionate uh with ourself and there there is one activity in self-compassion hugging ourselves we usually hug others we get to hug ourselves putting our hands on the back of our shoulders yes yes and especially with all the social distancing right now you know that's a really good practice and another thing that that brings to mind um as as well Nishant, is i'll have some folks like you know place the hand over the heart and over the belly you know if we're really feeling you know upset and it's hard for us to ground ourselves if you place your hand either on your heart or on your belly or both, you know, just like a baby, whenever, you know, when you pick up a baby, you know, you're picking them up and you're, you're placing their torso on you, you know, and they feel that contact. And sometimes for us, you know, our, we can feel really tense and really upset, you know, especially if someone's feeling overwhelmed, you know, I'll have some clients, they'll place their hand over their heart or over their belly and, you know, just, I'll just have them just focus on that, you know, feeling and just the rise and fall of the breath. And then just, you know, if there's such a comfort to that, just a, just a settling down. And do you have any other practice that you pursue in your personal life to overcome stress and feeling of overwhelmed? Well, I kind of like mix them up, you know, <laughs> it's like all of the above. It's like, uh, I, um, any favorite practice that comes to your mind a, that you do it most of the time? Well, um, let's say, I would say that, um, one of the ones that I use, you know, right now, especially, you know, with all the things that are happening in our in our, you know, world right now and, you know, watching the media and all of that is I'm really aware, you know, because I'm connecting with others, I can really feel like the sense of fear and revved up energy and anxiety and that, and sometimes anger. And, and so, you know, I'll just dip in and, and watch the news just a tiny bit and then I have to <laughs> 
turn it off. <laughs> and then I will do this practice where I'll just go ahead and I'll, I'll take in a deep breath and I'll, I'll just bring in all of that, um, all of that energy of anxiousness and fear. I just pretend like as if I'm collecting that all together inside my body and I hold it, I hold it. And then I exhale out of my mouth, exhaling out of my mouth. And I'm just letting that release out of all, out of my entire body. I'm letting it release. It's kind of a visualization where you're collecting all of your stress from your body and then releasing it and literally observing observing your stress to go away from your body. Yes, yes, emptying out. I, I call this like emptying out, you know. I just even think of it like um, I remember – my dad would have these, uh, he, he like did a lot of uh, mechanical work and he would have um, the, like all of these um, uh, little parts, like these little screwdriver, like these little um, nails and things like that. And so he had this uh, special uh, little screwdriver at the end, there was a magnet. And so he used it to like pick up everything and collect everything together. And then just like all of those magnetized parts came together. And so that's what I visualize is like, whenever I'm uh, breathing in and I'm thinking about like all that stress, I think of all those little tools, like all of those little like screws and, and nails and all of those little screws and nails, just all kind of collecting together. And then I'm just getting them together and just taking them from all the parts of my body, from inside my head, from inside of my belly, from inside of my heart, from inside of my throat. They're all coming together. And as I breathe out, breathe out through my mouth, nice, long exhalation, I'm just dispelling them and dispersing them. They're out of my body, all those little tiny filaments and parts. They're all out of my body. They're all out of my body. They're all out of my body. And then after I release them all out of my body, I take a few breaths. And now I can feel some spaciousness. I feel some spaciousness inside of me. And this is a constant practice. It doesn't mean that you do it once and you are stress-free for your life. <laughs> that is correct. It's, it's a momentary Yes, that's practice. correct. I, I find, you know, I, I find uh, being a stress management instructor very humbling <laughs> because there are, you know, instances where it's just like I can just really, really, you know, sense it. But but I'm also gentle with myself. And, and it's like I'm here to have my process as well. And and it's not just a one and done, you know. It's, yeah, it's, exactly. And do you have this sleep management program i would like to know who is this program for uh this my my unwrapping stress program i do this for um groups you know and for corporations any, any group or corporation that really wants to know really wants to help um their employees or any group that really wants to help their um participants um to 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 get a little bit deeper um, understanding of how to really have more control over managing their stress, not only managing their stress, but learning the correlation between stress and tension and feeling empowered uh, on how to let that go. And um, I, you know, give them uh, all the different exercises and I give them, um, you know, how, how stress operates in our body and we do some um, exercises. And so they get uh, practical, um, they get practical experience in it and they can start seeing that, you know, oh, I can, you know, make a change. And these are, you know, simple things that, that I can do throughout my day-to-day -day life. And as part of a sleep management program, how does your process look like? Well, the um, sleep management, um, I always recommend people to do the stress management uh, first because in order for us to um, help ourselves uh, to be able to wind down and sleep, we've got to be able to acknowledge and be mindful throughout the day, you know, where I'm holding tension and how to let it go. And the more that I can practice that, um, then there are 
Um, you know, there's like sleep hygiene that I talk about. And then there's uh, being able to really connect and ground in and order for us. What to is sleep hygiene? Sleep hygiene is, um, you know, just making sure that maybe like a, an hour or two before I go to bed, um, just as a, for example, um, you know, I'm getting off the computer, I'm winding down because that's very stimulating. I know some people bring the computer and the phone and everything into bed and that, and I try to make it as much of a, of a, um, uh, electronic free zone <laughs> in the bedroom or, you know, I really try to, to limit that and, and wind down. And so you want to do whether it's eating, uh, whether it's any physical activity or working on the computer, you want to have a period of winding down. For some people, it's an hour. For other people, it might be a little bit longer um, before you're about to go to sleep. And, and you're what does that time period look like for you before going um, to bed? For, for me, um, you know, usually it's about an hour before, you know, I'll do that. Um, you know, and some days I can, if I'm like really tapping into it, it's just like, I can feel like I can sleep, you know, boom, you know, there I go. But, um, you know, I would, I would say that I have, and there are other times where if I'm in my old habit and I'm like, you know, pounding on a computer there and I'm like, oh my goodness, I've got to get to sleep. And that, then I have kind of a fitful night because I really haven't allowed myself to wind down and, and that. So, um, I, I really feel that, you know, there is something to this that we really need to, um, to have that time to uh, let our nervous system unwind before we are about to, to really kind of shut off. Exactly. And our, and our old habits always come. It is just we have to be mindful about all the old habits which are not serving us. Yes, yeah, and and I find that you know whenever that happens, then it just only <laughs> and I'm there and like it gives me more confirmation whenever I'm like kind of tossing and turning. Yes, I am going to the next time. I'm going to even <laughs> be more, you know, uh, uh, you know, reticent to uh, make sure that I have you know a, a window of time that I'm unwinding with my, you know, from my computer work. Yeah, you know, even checking on emails, you know, and that you might think like, okay, you know, I'm just going to check on this. I'm going to check on that. It's just, we're, you know, being mindful. Are you breathing during that time? How's your breathing during that time? You know, we can, we're just so heightened. And then we really expect a lot of the body to just go ahead, you know, and just unwind after that. Exactly. And this has been an amazing conversation so far, and I would like to ask you my last question, and this is specifically for our listeners. What would you recommend to people who take a lot of stress, anxiety, and not able to sleep? If, if they can't get to sleep? Yep. Okay. If they can't get to sleep, and so I had that issue whenever I was you know, flying. I had a hard time. Um, unwinding. And so I, you know, I would say if you can do um, a yoga nidra, which is your, it's your lying down, let's just say like you're lying on the bed, and you're just becoming aware of the back of your body, the back of my head, back of my legs, my arms, my hands, and just allow myself just to see if I can sense just myself lying there in bed. And if I can't, going in on the floor, believe it or not, I've had some of my clients lie on the floor to really start feeling grounded. You know, just having that sense of groundedness, feeling that gravity. If we can just start really sensing ourselves, what happens is, is when we're sleepless, we're really in the mind and not as much in the body. And so, if we can, you know, start to be in the body and just start our sensory connection. And I just invite somebody, just, you know, try this exercise. Lie down on the floor and just see what you can sense at the back of the body, the back of your head, your neck, your shoulders, arms, hands, legs, feet, you know, and much slower than what I'm talking now. 
in and then just taking some breaths and then your mind will go back up and then come back into the body. And you can start that from either from your feet and work your way up to your head or from your head down to your feet or for myself, I like to go like, I'll just see if I can, I like to make it like a game. Like, let's see if I can feel my hand or if I can feel my left foot, you know, and if I can just let that soften a little bit more. And what I found was, uh, especially whenever I was uh, flying and I wasn't able to sleep very well, just my, I just kept going over and over that exercise. And it was enough to really notch down my nervous system. And even though I knew that I was kind of like awake, sort of, I was actually able to um, to go throughout my day um, without being exhausted and having some energy. It's like I was doing something that was helping my nervous system. So if you can just do anything like these types of grounding exercises and breathing exercises um, or look up like yoga nidra on, you know, a good yoga nidra practice on uh, YouTube and that just to kind of get yourself acclimated of what it's like to feel, to just sense yourself when you're lying down. This is going to be a good way for you to help your nervous system to know what it's like to wind down so it can sleep. Well, thank you so much for all the good information. And I'm thank sure you, all the listeners will definitely learn to release their stress and able to sleep much, much, much better. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this podcast episode today. I hope you learned from this episode that you can apply in your life. If you did enjoy this, please subscribe to this podcast, The Nishan Gurk Show on Apple Podcasts. You can also subscribe to the show through my website, https colon slash slash nishantgarg.me n-i-s-h-a-n-t-g-a-r-g dot me Yoga does not transform the way she thinks. It transforms the person who sees.